Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, uh, Mr. Sayyid Al-Qsaybi. That was a very inspiring speech. Uh, well done for putting this together again uh, and uh, bringing us all together to try and inspire our young entrepreneurs and uh, future business leaders, inshallah. So where do we begin? Uh, let's talk generalities uh, in terms of what it is to go into commerce, into business. And the it is very important to be able to go to the basics. What are the basics? And the basics are human utility. Human beings need each other to uh, get, a buy, get by into their daily lives, uh, many aspects of life. And uh, we all depend on our collective skills to satisfy that. And that's what uh, the world is all about. So humans have developed skill sets uh, which makes other people need them. So it's a uh, you're all defined by what skills you have and what you can do in the collective effort to, uh, to go into human commerce. For things like food, clothing, transportation, entertainment, you name it. These are the things really that move the world and it's human consumption that runs global economy. And if you can be a part of that with your skill set, that's how you uh, create business. But it's very important to learn skills, uh, to contribute, uh, and specialization is going to be uh, the future, as opposed to just generalities. Now, this applies to all sectors. I'll talk a little bit about the oil and gas sector here in Bahrain and the opportunities. But uh, I wanted to start with the basics of really being able to understand the core principles. If you can do that, if you can simplify, then you have arrived. And what does that mean? And if you understand the full knowledge, you can actually simplify it into what the fundamentals are. Like the digital revolution was really based on the zeros and ones. Look what you can build from just plain zeros and ones. There are the, life can be looked at like that. And if you can simplify, that's a start at uh, really specializing into something. Uh, for, and for entrepreneurs, uh, I think understanding your skill set is, is critical. You really need to understand the core principles. And as you apply technology uh, and understand how it applies to uh, human demand and consumption out there, you, you can actually achieve a lot. So let's go into a few examples of uh, what uh, ideas can do. And uh, we talked about, uh, Ms. Hale talked about you know, the unreasonable thinkers being the disruptors, the innovators, but you need uh, you need principled methodology. You need the structured world to work. For, for in, the, in the refining industry, for example, I can't have operators thinking unreasonably. These are years and years of skill sets that are built on safety and operations. If that doesn't apply to anyone, it really applies to the concept of innovation. But you will need that methodical approach of coming to work every day, following rules. That's critical for continuity. But it's a bit of both. Life needs the discipline of operations, um, you know, punctuality, hard work, but progress needs that unreasonable thinker. And it's just one concept. Once it's proven, the entire structured system then follows it. Uh, and that's how it's applied to real work, to real life. Some of the things we've been looking at in the oil and gas sector, for example, is uh, the bah Bahrain has uh, one major oil field, uh, and it still has 85% of the oil remaining, but it's very difficult oil. One of the layers, for example, is uh, a very shallow layer we call the aroma. That's bitumen. That's very, very thick, immobile, and it's at room temperature, so you can't really drill and uh, flow the oil to the surface. And it's only 200 meters below the ground. It was never really calculated into our overall reserves. We started learning that the university, uh, the Gulf University here based in Bahrain was looking at bacteria, which is used in, uh, in oil spill remediations. It's, uh, and they were experimenting with using bacteria to change the physics of, uh, of oil molecules. And one of the companies that approached had a, uh, uh, some biobacterial uh, component, which they, they didn't tell us what it was, but it can convert heavy oil into light oil. And we uh, tried it in laboratories, and it worked. 
Now, one of the things uh, the people at Tatwir are doing right now is uh, they're testing it. They are injecting it into the formation just to see what it does. Uh, still an experiment, uh, maybe uh, a, high chance, a high chance of failure and a very low chance of success, but it's worthwhile. That's the way disruptive thinkers think, unreasonable thinkers think. Uh, shale oil, as you have heard, uh, fracking, for example, whenever people used to drill through these tight formations, they never considered them as being producible. It's uh, only in the U.S. Uh, when one man uh, tested fracking, where you can crack the, the rock and uh, pump water and sand, that they discovered you can actually flow oil. So that was an unreasonable thinker. And then the technology itself that was applied to conventional oil moved into the unconventional. So the discipline that is built in the old industry can easily be moved uh, to the unprincipled ideas of disruptive thinkers. You need both. Uh, but it, it takes unreasonable thinkers to take that extra step. Uh, or else you stay with what you currently do. And then for, when you move from oil production, you go into refining. For refining, what you do, you take unusable crude oil and you convert it into more usable uh, items like jet fuel that's used in airplanes, diesel and heavy machinery, gasoline, etc. The processes uh, that do that have not re really been changed for decades. There hasn't been a real revolution in terms of process technology. All it takes is a disruptor to think of something that comes and changes the way we refine products. Today, we have to spend billions of dollars to convert crude with high sulfur into a more usable diesel with low sulfur to meet uh, environmental regulations. There has not yet been uh, a process breakthrough that changes that, but it could happen when an unreasonable thinker uh, decides to test it. Uh, and they often try, there have been holy grails in all of these sectors, and they try, but they often fail. So when you're an unreasonable thinker, you should also, also make sure that you hedge your bets. Don't throw everything into an unreasonable thought. You always have to uh, have knowledge that most unreasonable ideas don't really work. You have to continuously try. It's always good to hedge your bets, have your uh, job that you go to, and it's okay to experiment on the side. Uh, once in a while, somebody who bets everything does succeed, but the chances are uh, that most people will not succeed. You have to continue, you have to be persistent, as we heard the stories say. Like, and you also have to be a little bit reasonable sometimes, a combination of both. And if you're the lucky one, you will make it. We are trying as well to help in other sectors here in Bahrain. I'll give you a few ideas, uh, because the oil sector is really uh, how we in this region interface with the, with the world. We, uh, we trade because we are able to export hydrocarbon resources we have. Uh, do we do much else? Maybe a little bit. And I think one way to start understanding this is look at your import bill. You probably, we probably in the Gulf uh, import most everything we consume. But that tells you that we are a consuming society. We don't produce a lot of what we consume. We, uh, we depend on exporting of oil, exporting of oil products, uh, exporting of gas, etc. Now, this makes it very susceptible to the volatility of oil prices. So if I was an unreasonable thinker, I would start looking at the import bill. These are, th these are things that are published. You can go into the statistics of trade, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, UAE, etc., and look at what's being imported. And then decide, can we do any of this we import uh, uh, in country? And if you can, that's an unreasonable thinker for the status quo. One of the companies here, Peninsula Farms, I know Sheikh Rashid works very hard on it. That was an unreasonable thought. And I probably was a small part of that unreasonable thought. And I remember when Sheikh Rashid came to me in his first or second year of operation, he said, this is it, we can't work. Uh, this is not going to make money. This is a lost cause. But, uh, on the contrary, if you remember your business uh, studies in, uh, in the US, they taught you a concept of the barriers of trade. So you have just learned what not to do. And uh, this third year, he uh, broke even, and now he's making a profit. And he's doing things like uh, producing soap from unused goat milk that turned out to have 
dermatological superpowers of uh, curing eczema. Uh, that's an unreasonable thought. What else can we do in Bahrain? We, water was a main part of this uh, island's uh, past. This is why you had a higher population than usual, because freshwater springs uh, came out of everywhere. Uh, little has been done in desalination. We, we do not have desalination technology, and yet the Gulf countries are probably the largest consumers of uh, desalination technology in the world. Uh, we don't produce any of the membranes here. But we do have formations in deeper grounds that, uh, that are less sal saline than, uh, than seawater. This is ancient water that's buried in layers that we pass through as we go towards the oil or the gas resources we drill. Can we have a bottling factory from those zones? Answer is you probably could. But you need to develop that knowledge. We probably have it. We have the Electricity and Water Authority here in Bahrain. Can we do more to be more secure in our water resources? I think yes, that's another factor. So food, peninsula farms, water perhaps in the future. How about construction? What do we do today? We depend on foreign labor, uh, high labor intensive construction techniques. Uh, and there hasn't really been innovation in it. We're actually trying to do something at Babco as an experiment to see if we can bring young Bahrainis to build their own houses. That's an unreasonable thought. But if it works, you're changing the dynamics of, you cannot depend on the luxury of subsidies and uh, reliance on others. We need to start going back to the old days. Our forefathers didn't have it as easy as we did. And the world goes through cycles. You have to be ready. Uh, are we ready for a crash in oil prices again, like what happened in 2015? This would be devastating to our economies because that's the only commodity we depend on. To import everything, what we wear, what we eat, what we drink, for our transportation. So we have very little utility built in country. Uh, and that has to change. This is where you have to be unreasonable. Uh, examples like Peninsula Farms is a good one. If we can do something about construction, you don't need to import a lot of uh, labor from abroad. You can probably build your own houses. Because you import them using what? Using excess dollars you generate by exporting crude oil. Now what happens if you don't have a lot of crude oil, all the prices crash. Your ability to transact with the rest of the world gets limited. Today, we are a single commodity economy. Uh, and diversification is not yet achieved. It has to be achieved by a replacement of imports, at least partially. That's where I would start if I was an unreasonable thinker. Uh, and look at human uh, utility. What do people need? Housing, they need health care, they need uh, food, they need transportation, all of that. Material science, very important. Um, you know, as we unlock our resources, I didn't talk to you about the Khalij al-Bahrain, the tight oil resource we've been experimenting with, which itself was an unreasonable thought. It started off with an uh, exploration well by a U.S. company in 2009 where they did not find the oil in the zone they wanted. And the site geologist, the young Bahraini, wanted them to drill deeper. But they wouldn't do that because it was not in their program. So he sent them an email, which was illegal, and he did not have the authority. But uh, now that uh, things have gone the right way, it's okay to talk about it. He sent an email saying that, the government is going to pay for that extra few feet of drilling. And they reacted by saying, no, it's okay, we'll take care of it. They drilled and they hit the formation that we know now as the Tweg and the Hanifa formation that contains tight oil resources. But it was that one event, an unreasonable thinker, taking the risk, doing something illegal. I'm not, don't use that as an example. It might get you into trouble sometimes. But for this one situation, it actually worked. We now know that there's there is a large, large resource, resource underneath uh, Bahrain Bahrain territorial areas, which, which we claim uh, we're, we're trying to exploit for the future generations. generations. It's, it's going to give you light ends, uh, light, light gases, gases that could help, help with petrochemicals and push through the concept, the concept of downstream. Now, now we have a refinery that's being expanded. Uh, that, that refinery could go into basic petrochemicals. And the understanding of uh, material, material science is, is, is an important, important part of industry. industry. 
Uh, we have uh, Dr. Dr. Sam Rajishi here. here. I think he's, he's a, a very good example of doing that. He, he managed to set up a factory here in Bahrain and he exports to the world, to Europe. Manufactures parts for trains and uh, uh, subway vehicles, etc. I don't know what they call them, but it's, uh, that's an example that uh, has to be uh, looked at and copied. Material science, critical part. Happy, Happy to, to help, help, I think, with them keen. We, uh, we, we want, want to push for downstream. And technology is making it easier. To understand material science, you, you can, can easily buy machines that do this for you, automatically, 3D printers. printers. Uh, these uh, things are coming into, uh, into fashion. Uh, if you're a first mover, and that's, that's what we want to make Bahrain do. We want to replace imports, and we want to start exporting more. Those two things can get you a long way. And, and this, this is what, what our resources like Tamkeen, uh, the National Oil and Gas Authority, and all our companies are prepared to help with the financing sector to see more uh, of industry, more of import substitution, uh, and that's how you can be an unreasonable thinker. But always remember that you need other people. An unreasonable thinker by himself does not work. You need the structured economy to come with you. Uh, these, these are the, all the organizations that are here to support. That, that unreasonable thought only lasts a very short time until you prove that concept. Once it's proven, you have to introduce a structure to it. You have to think of all the aspects of commerce, not just the manufacturing part, but you need to sell it, you need to finance it, you need to make sure you profit at the end. A lot of hard work. Be persistent, you will fail many times. So, so don't, don't throw all your best into one idea. idea. You have, have to be reasonable. Leave a little bit for failure, because failure is, is going to happen more often than success. And always remember that you have to pray. Your spiritual part is important to all of this. We all believe it's God's will what happens to us. And always ask for guidance, so not to get that. Uh, we are here as humans for a short time, and uh, if you can do anything to benefit others, that's probably the best thing you can do. Leave more behind than you take away. Uh, I hope I didn't confuse you with, uh, it was an unstructured talk. I, I did talk to uh, Sale yesterday, and he answered back later. The first thing he said is, please don't tell me you're canceling. No, 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 cancel. I'm just asking you, what is this summit all about? And he answered me with something, but I still didn't understand it. I probably understand it a bit more now. That can be an unreasonable thinker, not too unreasonable. Remember the basics. Something of sorts like uh, Churchill. Churchill wrote a 30-page letter, and at the end he said, sorry, I wrote 30 pages, I didn't have time to write one. If you, if you have the knowledge, then you can go back to basics, and you can simplify. And that's what you build the foundation of an idea on. Like in, uh, you need to make sure you have a specialty, a skill set, and develop that skill set. And then understand that people depend on each other for things to work. You cannot do this alone. And an idea is only powerful when the time has come. And nothing will happen at the time you want. This is why you have to be persistent. You have to give it time. If God wills it, it will happen in the time God decides, and not at the time you decide. You also have to understand when to quit. Uh, not, not everything is going to be successful. So persistence, reasonable thought, unreasonable thought makes this life exciting, challenging. Wish you all the best, and inshallah in a few years we can look at some of the success stories and talk about them some more. And Mr. Rasevi, thank you very much for your support and your passion. And we wish you all the best in Falak and all the initiatives you do. And thank you to all the sponsors. Assalamu alaikum. Well, uh, give we'll, uh, thanks, thanks to the sponsors. Can, can we, we have, have our, our uh, trophies for the sponsors, sponsors please? My guess of the I want them to hear. Mr. Adpan, I'm going to
Thank you. 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 Thank The EDD. EDD. Anyone who's, who's representing the EDD here today? We don't, we don't know who's representing the EDD. EDD. Like, we'll put this on the side for now. So, <laughs> Babko, should, should we give, give it to you, or do you want to give it to one of your colleagues? Like, I guess I'll start with this. Who's next? next? Yeah. Benagas. Who do we have from Benagas? The, uh, what the Sheikh is talking about in terms of Peninsula Farms, for those that don't know, it's literally it's, it's a farm in the desert where you have different fruits and vegetables being, um, uh, uh, what's the word, they put it in hydroponic uh, water facilities, very, very high-tech stuff. If you get the chance to visit Peninsula Farms, very exciting stuff that they're doing. And uh, Kuwait Finance House, TFH. <laughs> and Khaliji Commercial Bank. No one is here? Okay, so we have one for GPI. You'll take it.